Hi, my name is Sena Kang, and I'll be talking about classic learning theories tonight. Um, we'll start with a brief introduction and in educational philosophy. Um, and the main part would be behaviorism, cognitivism, humanism, and I'll do a little bit of conclusion at the end. So in part one of Learning Theories Simplified, author Bob Bates discusses classical learning theories such as behaviorism, cognitive psychology, and constructivism. Um, behaviorism focuses on reactions to conditioning, cognitivism focuses on mental structures reacting to experiences, and humanism focuses on the desire to satisfy basic needs as, a, as, as we look um, at the three main educational philosophy today. Behaviorism focuses on the concept of conditioning, in which a behavior is reinforced or punished in order to change its probability of occurring in the future. This theory is associated with figures such as Ivan Pavlov and B.F. Skinner, which I'll be talking about later, and has been applied in various educational settings to shape student behavior. Skinner's behaviorism theory focuses on the effect of the environment on behavior. He believed that behavior is shaped by reinforcement or punishment. Positive reinforcement strengthens desired behavior, while punishment weakens undesired behavior. Skinner's theory has been applied in the classroom through methods such as apparent conditioning, which aims to shape student behavior by reinforcing desired actions. An example of using Skinner's theory in the classroom is reward system for good behavior. For example, in a classroom, a student who receives praise or a reward for answering a question correctly may be more likely to continue participating in class. A math teacher like me may use positive reinforcement by giving a student a small prize or reward for getting all the questions right on a math quiz. Students may be motivated to do their best to obtain the reward, encouraging them to follow instructions and learn effectively in their math class. Skinner's theory implies that individuals are passive and their behavior is solely determined by external reinforcement. However, the scripture highlights the importance of individual agency and responsibility. God provided humans with free will, enabling them to make choices and determine their behavior. Galatians 5.13 says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Cognitivism, on the other hand, emphasizes the importance of mental processes such as perception, memory, and problem-solving in learning. Proponents of this theory include Jean Piaget and Piaget and Lev Vygotsky, who highlighted the role of social interaction in cognitive development. Lev Vygotsky's uh, scaffolding theory emphasizes the importance of social interaction and development of thought in individuals through interaction with more knowledgeable individuals. In a classroom, this theory can be seen in a teacher providing guidance and support to students as they learn, allowing students to work with others to solve problems and promote a collaborative learning experience. The teacher can also test learners' prior knowledge of the subject, have more knowledgeable learners work alongside less knowledgeable peers, and prepare learners to come out of their comfort zone. A math teacher like me may use open-ended math questions that allow students to use their own mental processes to find a solution, encouraging self-reflection and critical thinking skills. Students may also be asked to apply their own experiences and prior knowledge to problem-solving activities. Bible often emphasizes that knowledge and understanding are crucial to Christian growth and development. Proverbs 2.6 states, For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. However, as a Christian, I also believe that true understanding can only come through the Holy Spirit, as 1 Corinthians 2.14 states, The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness. Lastly, humanism emphasizes the uniqueness of each individual and the importance of self-directed learning. This theory suggests that individuals must feel valued and free to engage in their own learning in order to grow and develop to their full potential. Carl Rogers' facilitation theory suggests that the teacher should be a facilitator of learning rather than an authority figure. Facilitation is more about how you teach than what you teach, and it's about making the process of learning easier for people, according to Bates. 
A teacher who follows this theory may focus on building a supportive relationship with each student, empowering them to take charge of their own learning process. In the classroom, this theory can be applied through methods such as emphasizing independent learning, allowing students to choose their own learning path, and creating a supportive and nurturing environment that encourages students to reach their full potential. A math teacher could encourage students to take ownership of their learning by allowing them to choose their own math projects, such as creating a budget or designing a blueprint for a new playground for the school. Uh, the teacher would act as a facilitator to support the student through the learning process rather than controlling the content and methods of learning. Christianity values the uniqueness and worth of each individual, recognizing them as created in the image of God. However, Christian growth and development also require humility, understanding that we cannot achieve everything on our own, and that true growth comes through submission to God and his, his plan for our lives. Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. And this humility is also the fear of the Lord, according to Proverbs 22.4. So in, in conclusion, overall, Bates highlights the key tenets and figures associated with each of these classical learning theories and suggests that a nuanced understanding of these theories can inform effective educational practices. This is the reference. Thank you for um, listening to my presentation.